Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cricket Chronicles with Chandresh. It's a huge privilege and honor to have a, a legend on uh, this channel, uh, the, one of the biggest superstars of Indian cricket, uh, Mr. Farooq Engineer, a true blue Mumbai boy. Uh, welcome to this chat, Mr. Engineer. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, Chandresh. Lovely to be on your channel. Yeah. Thanks a lot, sir. I uh, just wanted to know about your early years in uh, Bombay. Uh, what got you into cricket and uh, how big a part did Podar College play in your cricketing career? Huge part, yes. Well, I was born in Dadar, Dadar Parsi Colony and um, played for the local Dadar Parsi Colony Cricket Club where I didn't get anywhere really, you know, because <clears throat> there was a wicket keeper who weighed about 30 stones and they thought he should be the wicket keeper because the ball will hit him anywhere on his body and, you know, they'll, they'll go for less buys. But one day he was not available, you know, he was away or something or not ill. And the only way I could get in the team was by keeping wickets. And my brother was an off spinner of, of great repute. He played Ranji Trophy and, you know, and all that. Captain Mysore and they won the Ranji Trophy in fact. He was a very, very good off spinner. Spun the ball viciously. And I got a couple of leg side stumpings. That was something that was unheard of. Anything down the leg side, the wicket keeper gave the bowler a, a right rollicking. You know, how dare you bowl? <laughs> but an off spinner, pitching on the off stump, a middle stump, and going down the leg side, and the batsman going for an on drive. And common reflexes, leg side stumping, the foot is up. I got a couple of leg side stumpings, which were unheard of, you know. So my brother suggested, why don't you take up wicket keeping? You really got a really got a knack for it, you know? Because I fancied myself being a being a quick bowler. So anyway, that was the start of the wicket keeping. And when that club didn't really give me more opportunities, my my dad decided to take me. My dad was hugely, my parents, mom and dad, hugely, hugely instrumental, along with my brother Darius. I worship my mom and dad now, you know, I literally worship them to thank them for all they've done for me. And my brother, I lost him as well. So, I mean, these three were my greatest inspirations. And is it true that you also uh, aspired to be a pilot? Yes, I was uh, in, in, in college. There was NCC or Air Wing or Naval Wing. I was in the NCC, but I got a bit bored there, you know. So, I mean, um, I requested to go to Air Wing because of a chance of learning to fly and fly free because I couldn't afford it. Yeah. So, that, that that was a huge privilege. I loved flying. I loved flying immensely. And that brought me a lot closer to the great G.R.D. Tata because he used to love flying. He used to love sport. And when I was a Tata employee, you know, I was, I was hugely privileged to be very close to such a great man. He really took a liking to me. When I was offered a contract with Lancashire, I took his advice. He was the first one. And he was the one to tell me, go, go and play in England, get experience. The House of Tartars will always have, a, have an important role for you. Try and learn some, you know, besides your graduation, I've done my, done my you know, become and all that. Just try and learn something extra. And um, so, I mean, um, he played a huge part in my life as well. The and, great uh, year. And, and I believe that uh, the great Muhammad Ali was also your idol? Of course. Muhammad Ali is everybody's idol. I mean, he was in Manchester to open a, a club. And I was invited there. You know, he and I were the, if I can call myself a celebrity, alongside the great man. So he just jokingly punched me here. You know, just slowly. And he couldn't even speak properly because he was suffering from his Parkinson's. He says, they tell me you're a legend. You know, you know, I said, look who's talking. You know, you're the father of all legends. I said, you're the greatest sportsman ever. You know, so oh, what a lovely, he gave me his book. He signed it to Farouk and Muhammad Ali. It took him about 10 minutes to sign because his pen was going all over the place. You know, but what a, Coming back to your earlier question about Podar College, yes, it had a huge influence on me because 
we had a professor Chandgatkar there who was it was very interesting a long story that I can't relate now how I got to with our college you know in, in a gist he's he asked me how I've done my SSC exams and I said all right I wasn't the, the brightest of pupils I said why do you ask he said if you promise you'll join with our college I'll make sure you pass in your SSC exams I couldn't believe that I Professor was telling me this, you know, and without hesitation, I, you know, gave him my hand and I kept my word. As it so happened, I passed on my own merit. And he was such a gentleman. He told me that so himself. I passed about 50 or 52%, which is nothing by Indian standards because, you know, people get 90 odd percent and are refused admission in medical colleges and then engineering colleges. But I was a simple bawa, you know, simple. Parsi boy, simple life. I love life, love to enjoy life. As I said, my parents played a huge part in my, in my career. And I'm sure everybody watching us, so everybody listening to this will be, you know, will revere their parents as well. I think that's part of our Indian tradition. We are brought up, you know, we are brought up to, to love our parents. And, and, and any, anyone who falls out with their own mom and dad, oh gosh. One's got to swallow all one's pride and apologize, even if they are in the wrong. Yeah. This, is the, this is the respect and the love, you know, we have or we should have for our parents. What, what do you remember about your test debut? Uh, your call-up, who called you, uh, receiving the test cap, if at all. What do you remember about your test debut? Yes, my, my first step was uh, Lala Amanatu was chairman of the selectors took a team of Indian starlets to Pakistan to play Pakistan eaglets. That's where I got my first opportunity to, you know, to, to go abroad, so to say. And um, I must have kept because it's, you know, exceptionally well there and batted well. So Lala was telling everybody, the chairman of the selection committee, that this is our next Indian wicket keeper. Now, Soon after that, soon after we came back from Pakistan, Lala Amanath was out of the selection committee. And I think someone else came in who had never heard of me. So, but by that time, Budi Kundaran, the great friend of mine, great colleague, great, you know, competitor. I mean, we always looked over each other's shoulders, but we never wished each other any, any bad luck because we were such good friends. We grew up together. We were both honorary members of CCI. CCI gave us a huge opportunity, you know, and um, I'm very grateful to CCI that I was made an honorary life member, which, which, which is very useful because nowadays I go and play bridge there when I'm in, in, in Mumbai. But um, so after that tour, you know, there was a tour to East Africa, you know, a, invitation tour with Polly Umbrega, Nari Contractor, Jasu Patel, Jasu Patel had organized it. Thing. And again, I kept, because Jasu Patel was lethal to keep to on core matting. And every game I got about three or four stumpings of him. And Jasu couldn't believe it himself that you know, nobody has done that before. So, I mean, there were people like Polly Umbrega who was my hero, Nari Contractor and all these guys. Vijay Manjreka and all, all, all the top players with them. And um, so um, word spreads, you know, keep an, keep an eye on this young fellow. So um, I got I, my test, the test wicket keeper those days was Narin Tamane. You know, he was supposed to be a very good wicket keeper and very safe. I watched Narin very closely, but he always, I mean, he hardly dropped anything, but he never went for any first or second slip catches. And I thought if a wicketkeeper has got gloves, if the ball is not going to carry the first or second slip, I might as well go for it. You know, worst comes to worst, I'll stop four runs. If I take a catch, well and good. So I decided to do that. You know, we had Ramakan Desai, who was a very useful bowler, more than useful. Tiny, we called him. There's a lovely story about him and me. I'll tell you in a second. Remind me if I forget that. But to keep wickets to him, he bowled a useful bouncer as well. I got so many second slip catches, literally. With the result, the captain was Polly Umriga. I had to move the 
we got an additional field day in the team because that first clip was kept somewhere else. <clears throat> but the story with Ramakan Desai, he had already played test cricket. We had all India combined universities, you know, trials at Nagpur. And Ramakan was bowling, you know, with a new ball quick. And he was, he was quite sharp, you know. He bowled about, you know, 140k. Um, you know, he could be at, at that speed. But I was standing up to him, gathering. And I kept on telling him, go on, bowl down the leg side. Bowl down the leg side. So I can impress Professor Deodar, who was, a, who was a selector there. And he bowled a few balls down the leg side and I gathered them. I knew <laughs> the ball was coming also. But after a while, Ramakant tells me, Farooq, if I keep on bowling down the leg side, I might get dropped, he said, and you, you might get <laughs> He was already in the test team, you know. So, and again, a, a dear friend, sadly no more with us. And that's why I'm, I'm going to be 83 the day after tomorrow, on 25th of February. I don't know when, you know, you're going to relay this. But, uh, and I'm so grateful to God because lesser, you know, players of younger age, you know, Rabakan Desai, Hanuman Singh, you know, so many, so many players that I've played with have sadly passed away. You know, and every time I go to Mumbai, although I live in England, I'm the biggest Desi at heart. You won't find a more prouder Indian. And when India do well, and especially when they beat England, I'm the happiest man in the world, you know. So, I mean, uh, my, my Desiness, <clears throat> I still eat with my hands. I won't tell you what the rest I do with my hands, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say. I'm hugely, hugely proud and privileged to be an Indian. Always have been and always will be till, till my breath, last breath. You know? Although I live in England for circumstances, you know, beyond my control, really, you know. So I wanted to know, your hair is still doing well. Uh, is it all because of the, the advertisement that you did with Bill Creek? <laughs> well, those days, we got paid 50 rupees a day. You know, 50 rupees a day, which was 250 rupees for a five-day test match. Nothing. You know, the train fare used to actually cost more, you know. Although my dad used to always bring me to the ground and all that. But we didn't play for the money. We played for the pride and honor of playing for Mother India. That was the blessing. The Ashoka Chakra we had the, those days. You know, the three lions. That, that was what we played for. Played for the country. You know, given a life for the country. And um, sometimes when your country kicks you in the teeth, it hurts more because you love, you love your country so much and you want to do so much more. But I've had my setbacks like like anyone else has. You know, I've had my fair share of setbacks that I don't think I deserved some, some of them and some of the criticism, un, you know, unwanted criticism. But I'm very lucky, very grateful to God that I'm 83, still breathing, still alive and kicking and enjoying life to the full. I've always believed that life is there to be enjoyed, you know, and no point... This is not a dress rehearsal. We are not just doing this for fun. It's a real thing. So my advice to all our viewers is, you know, get up and go and enjoy life. Do the things you want because you never know what, what's around the corner. A lot of friends have told me, my dad's your age. I think he, he retired a long time ago. He just sits in his chair, does nothing, waiting. In, he's in the waiting room literally to be called up. No, I said, no, that's not the attitude I'm going to have. I'm going to live and enjoy life to the full. And I certainly do that without without playing harm on anyone. Yeah. So that's my, my advice to everybody is, yes, talking about the the Brill Cream. I was the first cricketer, Indian cricketer, to be asked to endorse products. And Keith Miller from Australia and Dennis Compton were the two previous sort of uh, models for Brill Cream. And um, it was a huge honor to be asked to model for Brill Cream because the money, they paid 2,000 pounds those days. I couldn't believe it. You know, that was like winning the lottery. 
apart from the money, to be asked to advertise for Brill Cream is like was like being on the cover of Vogue magazine or something like that those days. So it was a huge, huge thing. Because after me, there was David Beckham. So you can see the the type of quality of people that they and to be bracketed with. So, you know, I, I was usually proud. Again, I was the first Indian to have been offered uh, to play professional county cricket in England. And there were a lot of amateurs like Polly Umrigab, Vijay Manjureka, Datu Fatkar. They all played in Lancashire leagues before me. You know, leagues is one professional and the rest are butchers, bakers, farmers, whatever. But county cricket is 11 kaddus, 11 professionals, you know, from all over the world. So people like Gary Sobers, Clive Lloyd, Mike Proctor, Barry Richards, Gordon Greenwich, Rohan Kanhai. You know, that's the caliber of, of professional county cricket. So to be invited alongside Gary Sobers to play I was invited by four counties, in fact, Worcestershire, Somerset, Hampshire, and Lancashire. And Lancashire game hadn't been played at Old Trafford. And this was India-Lancashire game, which was played at a place called Southport, which is a seaside resort. And the railway lines were not too far from the, you know, from the ground. And I kept on hitting this Lancashire opening bowler for a few sixes over the railway lines, you know, till somebody pointed out so that was the great Brian Statham bowling, you know. I almost felt apologetic because I heard so much about, you know, Statham and Truman and all that, you know, which demolished our 1952 Indian team. So, anyway. So, and Statham paid me the huge, biggest compliment. He said if Farouk Engineer was behind the stumps during my career, I would have finished with twice as many victims. You know, so, I mean, to come like that from a great man because I got a lot of leg side catches. So um, we'd, I'd never kept because to fast bowlers before, you know, and then to come here. But it's pure sense of anticipation, sense of balance, sense of timing. And on the wicket keeping, while we're talking about wicket keepers, I'd love to pay young Rishabh Pant a huge compliment. You know, I've been asked who should keep wickets, Saha or Pant. And when Pant made a few mistakes, Pant is technically flawed. He's not, he's not technically the most, you know, astute. A purest wicketkeeper will, will certainly say that, and, and rightly so. But you take him as a package deal, like you took Dhoni. Dhoni wasn't the, the greatest of wicketkeepers, but he improved, improved a lot, you know, by practice and playing, <coughs> excuse me, getting experience. And Pant is doing the same thing. So after the first match, someone rang me and said, should Pant be dropped? I said, no way, because this boy will win you matches. And how true I was. He won in their matches, you know, in Australia, over here. So, I mean, and he's quick to learn. He's got all the ingredients of a good keeper, great keeper. He's got quick reflexes. He's got a wonderful eyesight, sense of timing. All these things, sense of balance. These are the four coordinates you have and you can play any sport, you know, and wicket keeping is certainly at the top of the tree for me, you know. So I was talking about World Eleven, you know, huge, huge, I was hugely privileged. That was one of my proudest moments for my country, you know, to have, to be number one wicket keeper batsman in the world. You know, when I had players like Alan Knott, Bob Taylor, Rodney Marsh, you know, to be above them all. And the selectors were select, select Sir Don Bradman, Sir Len Hutton, Sir Frank Worrell. You know, three great knights of cricket. So to be recognized by these people, you know, and later on when World Elevens were played, Sunil Gavaskar was there, Bishan Bedi was there. You know, so I mean, it was, it was a great feeling. Uh, uh, I, I'm quite interested in knowing your thoughts on why very few Indians, as compared to Pakistani, have played in county cricket? There have been very few Indians, like you, Dilip Doshi, Ravi Shastri played for a period of time. <coughs> the Morgan, yeah. Murli Karthik. Uh, why, is firstly, it, why is it that very less Indians have played? Well, firstly, you've got to be asked. You've got to be invited. You know, and um, in my time, there was Imran Khan, you know, just after me. 
and uh, Mushtaq Mohammed played for North Hands. There were only only two Pakistani cricketers in my when I played. But later on, a few came, you know. But then a few Indians also came. BBS came and played for Lancashire. In fact, I got him to Lancashire. Sachin played for Yorkshire for a year or two. Anyone, again, who's listening to us or watching us, and if you're a young cricketer, if you get the opportunity to come to England and play county cricket, grab that opportunity with both hands because you'll be a far better cricketer. Because in England, you play on different pitches. And in my time, there were uncovered pitches. You play against the creme de la creme. Nowadays, IPL also has creme de la creme. But you play the one English wickets, English conditions. With the result, your technique has got to be, you know, it made me a far better cricketer for India and helped me win the Oval Test match for my country, you know. So, I mean, um, so my advice to every, anybody, come to England and play, at least for a season or two. Now, Dilip Vengsaka was a very dear friend. He has got cricket academies and he does a tremendous job. He brings his team every year, youngsters, to England. I support him. I try and arrange the odd game or two also. But he gives youngsters the opportunity to come and play. Their parents also come. And I think it's a, it's a great thing for them. Great thing for a little 12, 13 or 14 year old to come to England and play against English bowlers and, and different teams here. They have the experience. You know, a bit different from playing at Shivaji Padyam Khan or, you know, or Dada playing in England. So, I mean, it's it's a wonderful opportunity. It's going to be 50 years of two, uh, 50 years, it's the 50th anniversary of two events uh, of Indian cricket that you were part of, the win in West Indies and the win in England. Everybody in India looks up to that generation and uh, what you guys well, did in West Indies and England. Generation, I hope so. Because um, West Indies... I was appointed the captain for that tour. You know, I don't know many people know about it. But Mr. Vijay Merchant thought that I was too flamboyant to captain India. You know, he was against me and Tiger Patodi for some strange reason. His only reason being that we were too flamboyant. I couldn't understand what he meant by that, flamboyant. I took my catches, jumpings, I scored runs. I played in Ranji Trophy, the League Trophy matches, everything. Proud Indian at heart. So, I mean, I don't know why, you know, he thought Tiger, Tiger and I were flamboyant, but for reasons known, better known to him, he brought an excuse that I'm playing county cricket, so I can't captain India. I said, okay, I'm not really bothered about captaining as long as I play for my country. Then he said, no, you're not not eligible also to play for India. I was sh completely shocked, you know, when he told me that in the meeting. And I'd especially been flown to India, to Mumbai, at CCI. We had, his, we had this meeting with him and Keki Tarapol, who was the secretary. And the both, I said to Clive Lloyd, is captaining West Indies. He's my roommate, my colleague in Lancashire. Yeah, well, West Indies may have different rules or so, you know. So, I was I was literally dropped from the West Indies tour, you know, but I was so pleased for Sunil Gavaskar and Ajit Wadikar, again, a very dear friend of mine, you know, that, that we did, had so much success. And immediately after the West Indies tour was the tour of England, where there was a different selection committee, Mr. Vijay Merchant had gone, and they approached me and said that, Farouk, would you, would you consider playing for India? We can't offer you the captaincy because Ajit Wadikar is at a I said, I've never, you know, been unduly bothered about captaincy. But I'll be only too glad to play under Ajit. <coughs> so I was like, <clears throat> vice captain for the tour or something, you know. I played in the test matches. And, and of course, we won the test match at the Oval in 71. And Chandrasekhar, you know, bowled beautifully. I was instrumental in getting the runs in both the innings and keeping wickets. But interesting, after the match, after winning the series, Ajit and, you know, Sunil and all the boys flew back to Bombay, Mumbai for a ticker tape welcome, which they thoroughly deserved, you know. I had to drive in the middle of the night from the Oval via an Indian restaurant 
who, who backed me a tandoori chicken. And on the motorway, as I was driving, I was eating the tandoori chicken that night. We won the test match at the Oval. And I reached home at about like three o'clock in the morning. And because next day at 10 o'clock, I was out striding out to open the innings with David Lloyd against Yorkshire or somebody. And much to my surprise, I got a standing ovation from the Old Trafford crowd, predominantly English. There were hardly any Indians in the crowd, which, you know, had, had a tear in my eye that these English people have just shafted their country the day before. And the same people are giving me a standing ovation. You know, they, they were so proud that I was a adopted Lancastrian, you know. And uh, so, I mean, this is the affection I have here. And Lancashire decided last year to have an all-time legends list. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. But I'm number three on the list. There were only four cricketers. Like Cyril Washbrook, you know, who, who, who died. Jack Chilsley, you know, who was no more with us. Myself and Clive Lloyd. We were the only, and people like Freddie Flintoff, Neil Fairbrother, Lakshman, Ganguly, they've all played for Lancashire, you know. So, and I'm one of the, you know, life vice presidents also of Lancashire, which is a, which is a great honor. So Lancashire really rewarded, you know. So in your view, that 1971 win over England, how big is it in the in Indian cricket history? Well, for me, it was just another game, another match, you know, winning another test match. I never played for records or anything like that. You know, I, I, I was playing for my country when we had an opportunity. We had to win that game. I told the boys in the dressing room, like 83, when we won the World Cup, I was commentating. I was the only Indian commentator. The film is not yet released. And I was there motivating, telling the boys, come on. Although we got a low score, we got runs on the board. The opposition have yet to get them. Same in the in, in the finals as well, you know, when he beat the West Indies. So I mean, I'm glad I was a bit of an inspiration to the to the boys, trying to instill a bit of fighting spirit. Not that they needed it. They were thoroughly capable of doing it themselves. You know? And all credit to Kapil and the boys who were there. But the 71 win was historic. I never realized the importance till later in life when people started telling me the first time India won in England. I was there when the first time India beat, you know, West Indies or Australia, New Zealand, everywhere. I was there part of the, you know, setup. So it was no big thing. But now that you mention it and the 50 years and all that, but what our board hasn't done anything to recognize that have, have they? I mean, I don't not know. Yet. Not yet. I'm not I've not heard anything from them. You know, it would be delighted. In fact, <coughs> they have this, the great Colonel Singh and I do a Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm yet waiting to get my award because, you know, Faltu cricketers have been picked for, for that thing. And for some reason, I have been blocked by someone who doesn't like my Akshay or, you know, what, whatever reason. You know, it, it just hurts that I've given my whole life to Indian cricket. You know, and I'm not in the list of like 50 or 100 people that have been awarded this Lifetime Achievement Award. I think I deserve it. So I hope this doesn't fall on deaf ears. I'm, but, pretty certain it, I'm pretty certain it won't. Just like it didn't fall on deaf ears when uh, you said while commentating that uh, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi might announce a public holiday. And uh, she did after listening to you. Is that story well, true? I, yes. Brian Johnston was commentating with me. He said, Farooq, do you think Mrs. Gandhi, you know, he, he, for him it was a joke. Do you think Mrs. Gandhi will declare a public holiday? I said, funny you should mention, you know, Mrs. Gandhi is an avid follower of, you know, our Indian cricket. As if, you know. But um, I have no doubt, I said, that she will declare a public holiday. And within five minutes, or 10 minutes, we got a phone call through to BBC headquarters and onto Lord's Cricket Ground in the commentator's box that Mrs. Gandhi has, in fact, heard your comments and declared a public holiday. <coughs> so when I met Mrs. Gandhi later, 
you know, she jokingly told me, thank you, Farouk. You helped me get a few more votes for, <laughs> for election. Yeah, that's, uh, these are lovely stories that come up. You know, the Queen um, informed me of my, my, my child's birth. N nowadays, cricketers have paternity leave or whatever, like, you know, without code. I'm not against that. That's their decision. But I would rather play for my country, you know. That, and um, I was playing the Lord's Chess match, and my first daughter, you know, my ex-wife had delivered my first daughter, Minnie. Minnie was my mum's name, by the way, you know, my mother's name. And so I was expecting the news any morning, and we were in the long room at Lord's with Her Majesty the Queen and Billy Griffith, the Secretary of the MCC. And some, there was a telegram or something came from Clarendon Court Hotel, where we were staying. And they opened the telegram thinking it could be either good or bad news or what, you know. And I could see the Queen smiling. I'd met her, you know, her before. So she just turned her head and smiled at me and came over to me. They always call you engineer. They don't call you Farouk or Mr. Engineer. That's the royalty privilege. I said, engineer, I've got some wonderful news for you. So I, I knew it could be only one thing, you know. I, I said, was it a boy or a girl, ma'am? He said, well, what did you want? I said, a girl. You know, she said, well, you've got one. <laughs> That's the... I knew I was going to get a girl because I was by my mum's bedside as she was sadly dying, you know. And um, I was actually crying by her bedside. She put a hand on my head and said, don't cry, son. I'll come back as your first child. So I knew I was going to get a daughter. That's why I named her after my mother. I'm, I'm getting very sentimental when I speak about my mum like that, you know. But shows how much love and affection I had for her. I'm a close friend of yours during your uh, during your days in Manchester. Now uh, has been the great George Best. Tell us something about your friendship with the great man. Well, I had just come from India. He had just come from Ireland. He didn't have many friends. I didn't have many friends apart from the cricketing, you know, friends I had. And um, we were next door neighbours because. Lancashire County Cricket Club had a house, and Manchester United, Manchester United, Lancashire County are very closely connected. We're only 100 yards from each other. The Old Trafford Cricket Stadium and the Old Trafford Football Stadium. The Theatre of Dreams, as they call it. So, I mean, uh, <coughs> George didn't drive those days. So, you know, I was given a Ford Escort, a red Ford Escort by company called Quicks, you know. Funny enough, when we were driving first day, I collected my port and George was with me. And it was a slippery road, a wet road. And we passed a place called Stretford. The Stretford end you must have heard yeah. in commentary, you know, which is on the way to Old Trafford. And this rather attractive blonde lady was walking down the road. So both our eyes went off the road and we were looking at the blonde. And suddenly the car stopped in front of me. So I tried to break it, but the car skid and I went straight in the car in front. Brand new car, first day. This was a sponsored car given back. So I, I, I apologize, I said, sorry, I took my eyes off the road. You can blame that attractive blonde for it. I said, you know, after all, I said, you don't see many blondes in Bombay, I said, no. I mean, luckily they took it in a nice way. And, but George was with me during that thing, you know. He, he and I developed very, he loved curries. So we used to go to curry, you know, you know, Indian restaurants here and all that. And he used to love a good time. I used to love a good time. So everything clicked. And we had, we formed a very, very close friendship. You know, mm -hmm. till the day. And another great man, uh, Fred Truman, gave you your nickname, Rookie. Rookie. Yes, yes. As for a Yorkshireman, Farouk was a far too difficult to pronounce. You know? <laughs> mm, I'm going to call you Rookie, he said. I said, whatever, you know. So we, I used to keep wickets regularly to Fred Truman. After, after he retired, I retired. We went to Cayman Islands to play. Fred took a team there. 
And then we, we did several tours together, you know, outside. And I used to keep wickets. So I stood up to the wickets to Fred Truman. And every time I got a stumping, everybody else would come and congratulate except Fred. The score book will say stumped engineer Paul Truman. People won't have, people won't think I was as quick as you know. So he used to be he used to be quite you know serious about it. But lovely guy, lovely friendship again. He was only a name to me when you know when he was wrecking the Indians in '52 and before that. So to develop a great friendship with him was nice. First time when I played when I met him, lovely story again. Brian Statham. We were at Headingley for the Lancashire Yorkshire match, Roses game. And uh, Brian Statham and Fred came in his jock strap and his pipe in his mouth. You know, he used to call Brian Statham George. Mm, hello, George. I said, Hi, and this is for Oak Engineer. You know, Fred, as a Mr. Truman, it's a great honor meeting you, you know. And he said, mm. <laughs> He said, Don't you dash, 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 creep. He says, you know, and he said, when he comes out to bat, I just got the fastest 100, by the way, against the West Indies. So that was in his mind that I've been, I was hooking Wes All and Charlie Griffith and Roy Gilchrist and all these guys. So Fred Truman will be, you know, easy meet for me. But according to Fred, he was the quickest bowler in the world or the best, greatest bowler. He didn't lack any confidence, that's for sure. So he said to Brian, the phone rings for him. That time, there were phones in the dressing room. He said, ask them to hold the line because he'll be right back answering it, he said. <laughs> I opened the innings. I think with Jeff Puller. And it was still a bit on, still a bit off and everything. And Fred, with due respect to him, had just passed his prime. He wasn't, you know, as quick in the 60s as he was in, in the 50s. But, and I was expecting a bouncer because such an attacking field and all that. And the first ball was a bouncer. For me, it was such a lollipop that I hit it flat for six. You know, and heading the pitch was like this and the pavilion was across. So it hit the pavilion balcony and came back even quicker. <laughs> and I think Richard Hutton or some, or Henry Illingworth was, was feeling there. He said, I'm not going to feel there anymore, Fred. <laughs> I got about 90 odd before lunch, 96 before lunch, something like that again, just like I had at Chennai. And I was out trying to hit a six to somebody. And um, we had a chairman of selectors, Sir Washbrook. So lunchtime, he tells me, Farouk, in Rose's games, these are so traditional. We don't even hit a four before lunch, he says. You know? So I mean, uh, so I broke all traditions, you know. All right. Luckily, I had a good eye and all that. But that evening, we were all invited to the committee room for a drink, you know. Not necessarily alcoholic drink. You can have anything. But it's like both the teams are there, important sponsors and guests are there. And Fred asked me if I'd like a drink. I said, yeah, I'll have a beer. Thank you. And the boycott and other Ellingworth and all said that they've never heard Fred room and go and ask the opposition for a drink. Although he was not paying for it, drinks were free. So, I mean, that was his way of saying, well played. You know, and since then, we, we developed a, a very good friendship. I was invited to unveil a statue at Skipton by his wife and by the Yorkshire Committee, because Brian Close and all, you know, we got, we got, you know, we're, we got very close. Pardon the pun. Yeah, but... Again, a great warrior, Brian Close. And uh, John Major writing for forward for your for your book for your autobiography. John Major heard about it, and again, he was a lovely story about him. Also, we he was at Old Trafford, and being a vice president, I was in the in the in the committee room, and I asked him, "Would you like a drink?" and uh, he said, yeah, I'll have, a, I'll have a gin, you know, gin tonic. <coughs> no, I'll have a gin, I said. And then I said, what would you like with your gin? He just leans forward to me and says, some more gin. <laughs> I was expecting tonic or something like that. But 
again, what a wonderful person. He heard that a autobiography was coming out for me. He said, would you allow me to do the forward for, for it? I don't care if you ask other people also. And there was Jeffrey Archer as well. That, you know, Jeffrey said, I would love to do a little forward also. But let John Major do the main thing, which, which is a great honor you know, for to have the British Prime Minister. I would never, never have asked him because, you know, I said, who am I to ask the Prime Minister of, you know, of England to do? But he was such a lovely human being. And just, a, just a few more questions. Uh, you played yeah. alongside such great cricketers of your time. Who, are, <clears throat> who was the greatest in your view uh, that you played with in the same time? Because you had the likes of the four spinners, Ravaskar, Vishy, uh, so on and so forth, Pataudi, Vareka, uh, yeah, but the, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Uh, or maybe you can give us two names, one Indian and one foreign. The most complete cricketer, in my opinion, internationally was Gary Sobers. You know, he bowled quick, left arm, he bowled Chinaman, brilliant short leg fielder, brilliant batsman, of course. You know, the greatest, the most complete cricketer. But as a batsman, Rohan Chennai, you know, the, 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 these were the great names. In India, Indian cricket, of course, out of the four spinners, by the way, I believe Vishen is not well. He's had a triple bypass operation. And I would just take, like take this opportunity to wish him and his family, you know, wish him a speedy recovery. He's a fighter, so I'm sure he'll come through. But um, for me, the greatest, Prasanna was a great off spinner, you know, beautiful action, you know, guile and delivery. But for me, the pick was Chandrasekhar because he was a polio victim and he made a defect into a great asset. He converted that. What a fighter and what a lovely, lovely, lovely person. And by far the greatest spin bowler India have ever produced, I think. You know? he, bowled, he turned, he was a, he was a freak bowler. He bowled pretty good speeds, you know, 90, 100k, and spun the ball viciously to keep wickets to him on the last day of a test match to a left-hander like Gary Sobers or Clive Lloyd, where the ball pitched in the rough and flew all sorts of directions. Without Chandra realizing which way the ball was going himself, because he didn't always, he planned to bowl a leg spinner, it was a Big googly, because wherever his fingers took him, but I could see the way he gripped the ball, the way it left his fingers in the air and off the pitch, it was like a split second computerized effect. But I could tell straight away which way the ball was going. You had to to keep wickets to him. That, that was most interesting, and I think he was a great bowler. He bowled India to so many victories. So B. S. Chandrasekhar was the was the greatest spin bowler in my opinion. Yes. And uh, uh, in terms of in your county days, you had the two Lloyds uh, playing alongside you. Uh, yeah. And, then, and after much much after you retired, you had Wasim Akram playing for a very long time. Lakshan yes. Ganguly. Uh, yeah. So, who was the we, we, So many, like, you know, I've had so many people following me at Lancashire. The original invitees were only me and Gary Sobers. But Sobers couldn't agree to you know, the financial terms of Lancashire. So he went to Nottinghamshire. And I was asked to invite, to, to suggest a name. And I suggested Clive Lloyd's name because he had impressed me. It's got a beautiful 100 against, or double 100 against India. So I told him, Mr. Washbrook, our selector, selection committee chairman, he told me, but for a rookie, wears glasses. I said, never mind his glasses, Mr. Washbrook. Sign him on. And he was my roommate for 10 years. And uh, we're still very dear friends. So, I mean, uh, and we had so much success together. Lancashire were the Manchester United of, of cricket. We just won everything in sight. You know, Gillette Cup, John Player League and everything. So we were a very formidable team. And when I joined Lancashire, there was one test cricketer, Brian Statham. But then when I left Lancashire, I'm not saying it's responsible to me or Clive. But there were 10 test cricketers. 
You were Peter Lever, Ken Shuttleworth, Barry Wood. You know, Harry Pilling should have played Test cricket, but uh, there were so many other. <coughs> excuse me, outstanding players. You know, and Lancashire were the team to watch. But before county cricket, just before, there was a team called Rothmans you know, Cavaliers that started playing the one-day cricket. They played at Seaside Resorts, where Gary Sobers was captain, Mike Proctor, Gordon Greenwich, myself, Gary Sobers. You know, we were all, you know, what a team to go and play. Like, like those, uh, what are those basketball? Harlem, Harlem, like that. You know, playing exhibition matches and seaside resorts. They were completely flop. <clears throat> so John Player League, John Player got the idea from Ambush Marketing or whatever. And they started the John Player League, which was so successful. Then Gillette, not to be left out, they started the Gillette Cup, which was, you know, 60 overs. So I mean, these are all one-day competitions that emanated from the original one-day cricket. But T20 cricket was invented in England. They first played in England. But they just didn't have the either the brains or the they didn't have Bollywood. <laughs> you know, and then in other conglomerates like the Ambani's and all that that we have in India. So I mean Lalit Modi took the idea to India and formed the IPL. I mean, we are the envy of the world. The IPL has done a tremendously great job. You know, I love, I love the IPL. A lot of ex-cricketers will say, no, a load of rubbish and all that. I've heard them mention. Okay, it's a bit of a bit of a thrash. But look at the enjoyment it provides. Look at the entertainment it provides. Look at the opportunity it provides to younger people from poorer families, from villages, you know, and for guys to come and the rickshaw driver's sons and you know, they build houses for their parents. You know, I mean, it's some Bandia brothers have done so much for their parents as well. So, I mean, so much good has come out of it. How can you not enjoy the IPL? I watch every IPL game, so, you know, especially Mumbai Indians are, you know, huge for them. Ambani's are very, very dear friends. Wonderful, wonderful family. You know, they've done so much for us. For, you know, Indian cricket as well. And Sachin connected with them also. So IPL, I think, is great. You know, we always joke that I would have been the highest earner in IPL these days had I been playing. <coughs> Tell a lovely story about Sachin with all the money he has. His, um, his friends advised him to get a credit card. You know, so the local bank clerk asks him a routine question. He said, Mr. Tendulkar, are your earnings in excess of 50 million rupees? So Sachin shrugged his shoulders and says, some days, yes, some days, no. He says, no. So I mean, um, <clears throat> but he's a lovely boy, Sachin. You know, he and his family are great inspiration to Indian cricket, great inspiration to youngsters. You know, his success hasn't gone to his head. And they're such a lovely family. You know? And uh, you spoke about enjoyment of IPL. The very first season of IPL, you were a match referee. And yes. uh, you had the onerous task of uh, adjudicating on Harbhajan and Sri Sar. True, true, true. Well, I don't actually see the incident after the match had happened, you know. But it was pointed out to me. And I had to go and see in the television, you know, the replays. And the foreign press, the Australians especially, Oh, typical Indians. Actually, the word typical bloody Indians, they'll just shove it under the carpet. They won't do anything. You know, and, and that was a great insult to me and my country. You know? So after seeing the incident and all that, Harbhajan, a lovely guy indeed. You know, he just lost his school, but Sri Sant sort of aggravated him, you know. And uh, after the match, I believe, when they shake hands, you know, he must have seen some of that hard luck or something sarcastically. You know, and he turned his back. Harbhajan just gave a padak backhand, you know. And uh, the whole thing just took off. He started crying. He stood in front of television cameras and all that. 
So the rest is history. But I find Harbhajan, the money that he would have earned for the rest of the season, you know. So, I mean, we did take action. But um, I think people are very... Match referees these days are very, very reluctant to take action against any any cricketer, you know, and I think they're doing a great disservice to the game because there have been several opportunities when players should have been ticked off for certain actions, you know, but not a word has been said about it. It's all been brushed under the carpet and that's not the game. That's not the way, you know, cricket should progress. So, I mean, but I'm not here to, you know, what are the rights and wrongs of the game. I've had a great life, great, enjoyed my cricket immensely. And I will continue to enjoy my life as, as long as I can breathe. Yeah. You didn't come back to the IPL, did you, after that? In the later years? I was invited. Again, politics. You know, I, I thought I did a tremendous job there. You know, the very first year. Second year, it was played in South Africa. And much to my surprise, you know, Lalit Modi was also out by then. You know, BCCI came in. And <coughs> I wouldn't have mind some other cricketer taking my place, but some, some politician or someone went as match referee, you know. And I just couldn't understand the logic. You know, some, some rich guy's nephew or some guy's son. You know, was 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 there in my place, and that hurt me. I thought, you know, had it not been for me, the IPL may have never have taken off, because the very first match was at Eden Gardens, where umpire Billy Bowden wanted to call the game off. The very first game at Eden Gardens, televised, the whole world is watching the first game of IPL, and a little wet spot on the boundary line. You know, Billy Bowden wanted to call the game off. And I said, no way. You know, you know, we are the showcase of the world at the moment. India, everyone has got his eyes on India. And many of the purists wanted IPL to fail. You know, they didn't want IPL to succeed. Why India? Why, you know? So I said, no, you will play. You will play a reduced overs game. And Brendan McCallum got a beautiful hundred there or something like that. And that was a takeoff for the IPL, you know, uh, that that really created, you know, send the waves running through throughout the world and IPL really took off from there. And then not to have been asked the next year was a bit disappointment. Even Clive Lloyd was a referee and he wasn't asked either. So, I mean, some sinister things were going on. I've had a lot of disappointments, as I said. I was appointed captain officially at Delhi for the Firo Shakotla. Test match against the West Indies. You know, Patodi was unavailable. And I was about to go out to toss. I had my blazer on. Clive Lloyd came in out, rescued me with a coin. Come on, rookie, he said, let's go and toss. And Raj Singh Dungapu was the manager. said, hang on a second, there's something very sinister going on behind our backs. In came in Venkat Raghun all of a sudden from a letter from M.H. Chidambaram, the board president that he is to captain. He was not even in the 15. And suddenly came on in his blazer ready. He flew in a private aircraft from Chennai. That he is to captain the, the team. And Prasanna, or Chandrasekhar, who had got five wickets in the game before, had to be dropped to... I'm nothing against Venki there. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a good friend. But these are the politics that you know, went on in our cricket. Horrendous. And the funny thing is that I was, well, it wasn't funny at the time. I was hugely disappointed, naturally. You know, I was out when he lost the toss and we were put into bat. And Andy Roberts, a couple of bounces from him, they went for sixes, you know. And they are all known about it, West Indies players, about the, what injustice was done to me. And Roberts said after the second six, he says, man, don't get it out on me, he says. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing, situation was diffused. We, had, we smiled after that. And, but it hurt. Is that the reason why you quit at the end of the series? You retired at the end of the series? 
No, that wasn't the that wasn't the only reason. It was partly I was invited to play county cricket. I was offered a director's position in a in a company in a textile company in England. So I thought, well, cricket is secondary now. Let me try and make a career out of myself. But that incident didn't help matters. Of course, it didn't. You know, I was hurt. I was deeply hurt that <coughs> whenever I captained India in the past, I'd done very well against England at Eden Gardens when Ajit Wadika fell ill. I had to get 10 English wickets under 130 or 140 runs. And um, I got Chandra again. I said, Chandra, there's plenty of time. They will easily get them in singles. So we got to attack them and just we got to get them all out. That's the only way. And to make them play shots, make them play unnatural shots, you know, try to hit it over the top and all that. And with your ability and our field pacing, I'm sure we can get them out. So we did that. Alan Knott was a night watchman. I remember he was frustrated not getting a single or not getting the mark. Then he dashed down the pitch, tried to hit Chandra, and he was stumped down the leg side by me. And then started England started panicking. And we won that test match. You know, it, people forget these things, you know, but... Uh, so I'd never let India down whenever I captained or any team down whenever I captained them before. So I was a bit hurt, yes. So why, you know, I love my country. I love playing for my country. Hugely proud of being an Indian. But, you know, you got kicked in the teeth sometimes, as I said earlier. And this was just one of the things. Many, 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 many things. My name was put up for Padma Bhushan a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, which again is great honor. The government of India, you know, Mr. Arun Jetli actually wrote to me and said, we're going to offer you this. Would you accept it? And I said, with the greatest of honor, in a huge honor. There's somebody from BCCI, I don't know who, Somebody pulled some strings and my name was taken out last minute. I don't know why, you know. But uh, you can't help it if you're not liked by everyone. Mm -hmm. But at least those people who have liked me or those people who even dislike me, I love them. I have nothing, I have no grudges against anyone or anyone. I wish everyone well. And that's, that's the way I live, my philosophy. Thanks a lot for your time, uh, Mr. Engineer. And really <laughs> Very interesting questions there. You know, you must send me a copy of this. I will, I, yeah, I will do that. I'll do that. Can I request you for one thing? Can I request you to just look into the camera and tell everybody to watch this interview and like, share and subscribe the channel? Well, obviously, you must have, if you enjoyed the interview, which I have no doubt you have, you should subscribe to the channel and watch watch my friend Chandresh. You've done your homework very well, I must say, you know, which you must be doing every time when you speak to other cricketers or other sportsmen. So naturally you deserve all the all the kudos. And keep subscribing to your channel and keep watching my good friend Chandresh. And all the very best to you. All good wishes. I know you all want to wish me a happy birthday. So thank you, I'll say. God bless you all. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you.